Hi, welcome to this lecture on an introduction to microcontrollers. So in terms of the contents, I'm going to give you some initial motivation examples um, via introduction, then move on to the Arduino Uno to details of the microcontroller, and then details of the microcontroller in terms of pulse width modulation and quantization. I'll finally finish off with the summary. So in terms of the key learning points of this lecture, after this lecture, you'll be able to understand the block diagram form of a closed loop control system for a digital control system. So this is relatable to the form that you saw previously on the sampled data control system for a discrete, well, for discrete time modeling of a control system. The key features of a microcontroller, so in this case, I'm obviously focused on the Arduino Uno, and in terms of the digital well, the key features, it could be the, some of the key features I will detail is the digital and analog pins. So for in, input and output signals. And then finally, the operation of pulse width modulation and quantization and how these relate to microcontrollers. So again, we're using the Arduino Uno throughout this lecture. So as a motivational example of running through this lecture, what we're going to do is design a control algorithm for collision avoidance using a lab scaled vehicle. What the aim of this scaled vehicle is to do is to achieve a 0.1 meter separation distance from an object ahead. So what I'm going to do is quickly play this video where you'll see for now it's it's effectively running through different values of KP. Don't worry for worry about that for now. But what you'll see is effectively this little scaled car is moving towards that you can see it looks like a wall. Um, and you can see there a red line, which is effectively your 0 0.1 meter distance away from the wall. OK, so I've run it through di different values of KP, so proportional control game. We will use this as a motivational example as we run through the different lectures, so it will make more sense in terms of what's going on here. But anyway, what you can see on this graphical output down here is effectively here you've got your reference in orange, which you can see is here. And then what you can see is your measured distance, which is the blue. OK, so what you'll notice is obviously I'm going from if we assume this this point here is obviously the that and that there is our reference that's 0 0.1 meters we can do that negative 0 0.1 meters anything beyond that is obviously a negative value so our reference is 0 0.1 meters because it's 0 0.1 meters behind this this wall and what you'll notice is obviously the number down here is much larger as the car comes closer and the distance is reducing got a little bit of a overshoot here due to inertia and then you can see here the the effectively the distance settles at minus 0 0.1 meters so i.e achieving the reference so distance measured achieve the reference um, and that's pretty much there an example of a successfully set up control system achieving its reference i.e minus 0 0.1 meters and also achieving obviously um, collision avoidance So now if we look at details of the lab scaled vehicle for the collision avoidance, so for the control system, so it consists of effectively three main components. The sensor that's located, you can see here at the front of the car, this is an ultrasonic distance measuring sensor, and this effectively allows us to see, so effectively to measure the distance. We then have the actuators, which you can see if we look underneath the car, we've effectively here got four DC motors, so direct current motors, and these effectively allow us to take action. So we can measure the distance with the effectively the sensors. The DC motors we can effectively create um, longitudinal um, displacement, i.e., get the lab scale vehicle to move forward. And then finally, we have the control algorithm that effectively enables us to think. So if you think in terms of a human being, um, if you were to apply this to yourself, so obviously the sensors are your effect of your eyes, so you would be observing. So say, for example, if you're walking towards a brick wall, you would be observing. You would then um, effectively, based on the observation, you would be deducing and applying. So you'd basically be moving forward until obviously you're walking towards the wall 
and then you would affect reduce well i'm getting closer so what i need to do is probably is probably stop and that's exactly the same way that this this um control system on this uh, lab scaled vehicle works so it measures a distance it thinks about the distance it compares it to the distance that it desires and then it takes action based on that so in terms of what the control system looks like you can see here the form of it in the block diagram form so it looks very very similar in terms of what you saw before because effectively it has a well what you would have seen before in terms of your previous classes on control and um, when you looked at whether that's continuous time modeling or discrete time so sampled reference so you can see here r subscript k is effectively your desired distance which is minus 0.1 meters what we have here is our measured distance which is effectively our sampled output and we have here where the error signal or the sampled error e of k is equal to the reference minus the sampled output okay so that's that's as you expect any control system works by by effectively generating an error which is just the reference take away the measured value we then have here our control algorithm i'm not going to go into details of that because in later lectures we'll talk more in terms of what the control algorithm would be here and then based on the control action so say for example if there was a difference between what we desire and what we're measuring the control algorithm would be configured and tuned to effectively take action to minimize or eliminate the error okay so if i want to achieve a certain distance I could effectively configure and tune a control algorithm as you've seen previously on the previous slide you know where I got it working um, and it achieved the reference I could do so and what I'm talking about now is control algorithm because effectively we embed an algorithm onto the microcontroller okay so when I talked in terms of control control algorithm think introducing the control algorithm now is located on this Arduino Uno which effectively maps, so it has the input from the, well, in, in this case, from the digital sense, uh, it's a digital sense, the ultrasonic sensor, so it has the input, and the output is then the voltage being supplied to the DC motor. So input um, from the ultrasonic sensor, and the output is a voltage to the DC motor. And the amount of voltage supplied is based on the difference between the reference and the measured value okay so hopefully that makes sense in terms of this looking slightly different because if you're probably looking now in terms of the system because in practice although you do have a you don't necessarily have a, a connection in terms of the signal but you do have a physical connection because the ultrasonic sensor and the dc motor are here both located on board the lab scaled vehicle however there's not now because we haven't got a mathematical model representing the system as you saw previously we don't necessarily have a, a, a physical need to connect these up because the ultrasonic sensors on board the car or the lab scaled vehicle measuring the distance okay so hence the system process is physical now okay so it's physical it's not an output that we're getting from a mathematical model um, that you saw when you would have studied previously when you looked at control theory. So building on the previous side, the purpose of this slide really is just to give you the general form of a closed loop control system. We have the sampled reference, the sampled output, the sampled error, the control algorithm output. And in these blocks we've got here our measurement, actuator and system and our control algorithm. So you can see here we've got a digital microcontroller and our system. So here's just the general form of the closed loop control system for a digital control system. And this sort of application, I'm not going to go through the videos, but if you want to watch these, just go onto YouTube, self-balancing robot, YouTube, put in this, YouTube, put in this. And basically, the in terms of self-balancing robot, it works in a very much a similar way is in terms of the actuator it's got dc motors the system is is obviously this frame the measurement it's got an inertia sensor because it's effectively measuring the angle to keep it upright and the control algorithm it's got a, some form of pid on there tesla um, cruise control so it's working in a similar way to what we saw on our scaled down lab vehicle where it's effectively measuring a distance to the vehicle ahead 
and it's got some former motor i think the dc motors on the tesla s and it's basically working in the same way to effectively maintain a desired separation distance between the vehicle head and then you can look here at our boston dynamics uh, robot and these are kind of really cool robots that boston dynamics are building again have a look at those but the purpose of this slide really is just to demonstrate to you that in terms of the closed loop control system applied to a practical digital control system i.e where we use a microcontroller and actual sensors and actuators you can see the form of it here looks quite um well the form of it looks obviously same as previous and it pretty much maintains this similar sort of form but this is just for one control system okay so we just we effectively have one reference we're measuring one and we're having one um measurement okay it obviously can get a bit more complicated than this because you can have obviously multiple control systems and multiple measurements uh, multiple physical phenomenon that you're trying to effectively measure and control now we're going to move on to the arduino uno so i'm going to give you details of this board and how it relates to what i've shown you previously so if we look at this first table here what we've got in the first column is the id which relates to this diagram here we've got here the component and some properties so if we look at id1 which is effectively the microcontroller so you can see here it's this chip so it's the at mega 328 microcontroller chip that you can see on the on the Arduino Uno board. The operating voltage of this board is 3.3 or 5 volts. So if you look here, you can see two here. So you can see here 5 volts here or 3.3 volts. So you can effectively get a source voltage here of 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Um, we can also supply a voltage in here so to free so we go to free you can see here v in here i can effectively supply a voltage in the voltage uh well the input voltage here if you look at the operational properties on this on this um second table down here properties it's recommended between 7 and 12 volts and the voltage limits are 6 to 20 volts it does have a voltage regulator on there so you it will although you're supplying it with a larger voltage this board works at actually 5 volts so well or 3.3 volts so the board will actually work at 3.3 or 5 volts because you've got here your source voltage of 3.3 or 5 volts but you can effectively um, overpower it or just limit it um, we have here our external power supply <clears throat> so 4 so here so we can supply the board with power via there and we can also supply the board via this usb plug here so you can see here five we also this usb plug here we use this to effectively to generate our code that we then embed onto the microcontroller chip okay um digital input output pins so there's 14 of these so if you look in here at six so there's 14 so you can see them all along here and these are used effectively to have input and outputs well inputs from digital sensors and trans well digital sensors really and output to actuators so what we saw previously was the car where we would have actually well we would effectively use these digital pins because the input is from a digital sense the ultrasonic sensor is digital and the output would also go to the actuator um, as well so and we have 14 of these six of these are provide pulse width modulation i'll explain what pulse width modulation is in a, in a little while time we have our ground so seven 
is our ground here. Um, eight is our analog reference pin. What we have nine is our analog input pins. So here, these are important because a lot of sensors and transducers give us an analog signal. So I .e. like your continuous signal. So you, you effectively would hook up your analog input here. 10 is ground pins. Um, 11 is reset button or pin, sorry. And 12 is reset button. So in terms of just covering some of the operational properties, you can see here the DC current port input output pin voltage when the voltage is five or 3.3. .3. And you can see here it's 40 milliamps or 50 milliamps. The flash memory um, and some clock speed and some other uh, important properties. So there's a few important things to initially be introduced to in terms of this board that will make more sense as we move on in terms of the next slide. So the analog inputs given by nine, so the ID nine, are effectively the analog inputs. They, what, they un, what they undertake is analog to digital conversion. So it'll take an analog continuous signal. And what it effectively does, is it'll sample that signal every sample time. So what you do is on a digital controller is you, you specify the sample interval, which I'm going to denote here, TS. So what it'll do is it'll sample that continuous signal. So I don't know, it could be a signal that's measuring temperature. So it'll sample it every sample interval. I don't know, your sample interval could be 0 0.01 seconds. So effectively you're catching information every 0 0.01 seconds. And it's also important of understanding, the, well, in terms of the resolution. So this board and the Arduino Uno has 10 bits of resolution for the analog to digital conversion. So what that effectively means is if we were looking at the temperature here with time, it would mean that we can, we can effectively, well, in this case, it's 10 bits. So if we do 10, two to the power of 10, it gives us 1024. So that means we've effectively got 1024 values or levels. So from zero degrees or whatever the, the starting point is for the thing, all the way up to it could be, I don't know, 100 degrees. We can effectively have 1024 different levels there. And the distance between those levels is known as the resolution. And we map those values, so from 0 to 1,023, which we relate to a physical temperature. And 0 is obviously one value, hence you only go up to, you go to one value less than 1,024. We map, because this board works at 5 volts, the input voltages between 0 and the operating voltage, i.e. 5 volts, are mapped between 0 and 1,023. Okay, that hopefully that's starting to make sense. It might be a bit confusing to now. And the pulse modulation, which is for output pins, is a digital to analog converter. So what it effectively does, it takes, well, the digi digital could be, it's going to be binary, it's going to be a digital signal. So it's going to take, for example, points like this that you saw previously. Okay, so your digital analog converter. And what it effectively does is an analog, what it's going to do is hold the signal like that. So imagine, and that's the, again, it's the TS, so it's the same sample interval. It's going to hold the signal that the, effectively, the digital, so for example, that value there, it's going to hold it. So what we have on this board is eight bits of resolution. So two to the power of eight is 256. So what that means, again, our output voltages between zero and the operating voltage, which is five volts, are mapped to integral values between zero and 255. Right, so obviously zero to five volts, zero to two five five, they are mapped onto each other. So zero here, zero, five volts is two five five. Okay, so straight away you can realize you can probably work out straight away well the in terms of precision, for say for example, because the the pulse modulation as you'll you're gonna understand in a few slides time, is used for our actuators. So if we wanted kind of to be able to achieve a desired velocity uh, not velocity voltage to give us a given i don't know precision or a higher resolution in terms of pulse modulation is going to make more sense but if we look here to make more sense of the pulse modulation so 
As you saw previously, a zero order hold is effectively a digital to analog converter. So as I told you here, you've got here your U of K, which is your, here you can see your control algorithm here. U of K is your control, well actually like effectively the control algorithm output. And here you can see U of K, which is your current output, U of K minus one, U of K minus two, which is your, like your, well, that's your current, that's your previous output, and then your previous, previous output. And the, obviously the time interval between these is 0 0.01 seconds. So what the zero to hold does, because you can see the zero to hold here, and this is located on the microcontroller. What this effectively does, it converts a series of pulses from the control algorithm, U of K, into a continuous time staircase signal U, um, U, sorry, it should be a K there, U, K star, as you can see here. So U, K of star, so you can see what it's doing at this point here, it's effectively holding the signal for TS seconds. This one here, it's holding it for TS seconds, and obviously this one here, it's being held for TS seconds as well. And this is obviously continuously updated based on the information, well, based on the, the control algorithm output. So what you can see is, although I haven't put any numbers along here, because it's just going to be some sort of, um, it's going to be some sort of binary number, because the binary number relates to a voltage between zero and five volts. What you can see here is you've got 3.21, 3.22, 3.24. So in terms of the port switch modulation, I told you it has eight bits of resolution, so I 256 different values. Therefore, effectively, the voltage um, out bit resolution is 0.0195 volts. So the smallest difference in terms of height that you'll, you'll difference for these different levels that you can apply is effectively 0.0195 volts. And in terms of that, as I said, that corresponds to the voltage supplied to the DC motor that is located on board the vehicle. So in terms of this scaled vehicle, what you can see is I've got here from zero to five. So I'm supplying the vehicle with between zero and five volts. What you can see on this corresponding graph is, although it's not so easy to see, you can see about a number here of five, a number here of zero. And as I move that, um, that tab there, what you can see is this staircase signal in terms of the voltage changing and being supplied to the to obviously the DC motors on board this um, car. At the moment, this isn't actually doesn't actually have any control because at the moment it's just we're just supplying a voltage to a DC motor. So I'm just going to cross out voltage um, control. But anyway, you get the idea of you can see the staircase. So that there is effectively your digital to analog converter working in real time case okay, so it's working on real time in that video so hopefully that's helped you understand it a little bit more So you, you're probably wondering how the port switch modulation works. It's effective a method of reducing the average power delivered by an electrical signal. And it effectively chops the signal up into discrete parts. So if again, we're considering the Arduino Uno, eight bits of resolution, 256 different values, i.e. values between zero and 255 relate to zero and five volts we've worked out what the resolution is on the previous slide right so if we wanted to effectively have five volts being supplied to the dc motor well that's going to give it as more power it's obviously going to have more resolution um it's going to spin faster what we would do is 
is effectively have because what I said to you, it's it's a method of reducing average. So effectively, chop it's a well effectively a method of chopping up the signal into discrete parts. So if we want to have five volts, you can see here, what we'd have is here is in terms of the duty cycle, it would be known as something that's a hundred percent duty cycle. So a value, a number of well two five five, which obviously relate to a binary number, and that would mean a hundred percent on, a hundred percent off. If we wanted to have 0% duty cycle, which effectively would be 0 volts, we have 0% on, 100% off. Okay, so you're thinking, well, yeah, okay, that's kind of obvious. That's on, off, on, off. So it's just like having a switch, so supplying 5 volts or 0 volts. So what we can do with this method, this pulse modulation method, is we can turn the effectively the, the signal on and off very, very fast, on and off, on and off, on and off, in terms of the same amount of times. So this is known as 50% duty cycle, value of 127, and it would be 50% on, 50% off. So if we have 50% on in terms of the voltage being supplied for 50% of the time, off for 50% of the time, very, very fast, what we get is we get the average of this. So the average of obviously those two being on off the same amount of time is gonna give us 2.5 volts. Right, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Then if we wanted a number between, say for example, 2.5 volts and 0 volts, so i.e. 1.25 volts, what we effectively do is have 25% duty cycles, i.e. 25% on, 75% off. And likewise for 3.75 volts, so 75% duty cycle, 75% on, 25% off. And what you'll see on both of these is obviously you're getting 25% duty cycle, so you're getting 1.25 volts, which is 25%. And you can see here that red line there is giving us the average. And likewise here for 3.75 volts, you can see the average there, which is that obviously that number as I just said. So pulse modulation is a great, very kind of an very efficient method to supplying a voltage a desired voltage to a motor for obviously changing the 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 revolutions per second so obviously the spin of it and the speed of it and obviously whatever it is you, your mechanical app or application is for that motor but this method is very very effective that we can do using a microcontroller and as you might be figuring out a little bit more as we've gone through a higher resolution i.e. in this case this is 8 bits, but high resolution will give you greater precision with the actuation. So, I don't know, a higher, I don't know, 10 bit of resolution for, for an actuator is going gonna, is gonna to mean, so if you're looking at high precision applications, you might want to go for a different board with higher resolution for the pulse modulation. So quantization is an important property for when we're considering um, inputs from sensors and quantization what we're looking at in this case is effectively an analog to digital converter so analog signal like i don't know it could be an analog signal like something like that as we said earlier about measuring temperature that's an analog signal and what we're doing is effectively we're capturing information every sample point so tier seconds and if that's like your temperature there or there, that would affect you on your microcontroller relate to some binary, well, a digital signal, which would be some binary number. Um, so you can see here we've got ultrasonic sensor. Um, this is actually a little, not the best example actually to use for this. Um, so the ultrasonic sensor is actually a digital sensor. So what this is doing is effectively sending out a pulse. It's bouncing off the object here and then it's then going, well, bouncing off here and we'll go more into detail in terms of the ultrasonic sensor in some of the later lectures as we will do with the DC motors so we effectively got here our trig which send out signal and then our receiver here and it's then doing a calculation to effectively estimate what that distance is at that current point in time the ultrasonic sensor has a effectively a chip on there which is which is doing the analog to digital conversion for you so the microcontroller wouldn't be doing the analog to digital conversion for you because it's doing it on the chip for you so this is an example in terms of the ultrasonic sensor is an example where we'd actually supply the signal to a digital pin rather than an analog pin 
Okay, but say for example, I talk about temperature sensor. Temperature sensors are primarily are primarily um, they give you an analog signal, so you would use the analog pins on the on the Arduino Uno. Ultrasonic sensor, those are digital one, and as you'll see this as we go through anyway, because I'll give you some examples where we use both anyway, and I'll show you. So what's happening on the ultrasonic sensor is, think about it as effectively having a sample switch that's effectively sampling that kind of data captured from the pulse being sent out the sound wave, bouncing off there, returning. It's capturing that information. And you can see that on this little video here in terms of, you can see here minus 0 0.04, minus 0 0.6, and you can see there the distance effectively being captured. So what it does is sampling converts a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal. And what you'll see here is you can see here your discrete time signals here. So the discrete time, current sample, previous sample, previous, previous sample. So Y of K is my measured distance, which in this case, my current sample is minus 0 0.023 meters. So that's my measured distance. My previous measured distance here, and you see obviously the distance between these is, is effective my sampling tool 0 0.01 is um, now minus 0 0.234 and you can see here my previous previous sample was a distance valued of minus 0 0.236 okay so quantization important so you can see here the sample switch because what it's doing is effectively what would have been a continuous signal so I don't know I could draw through that like that I don't know is effectively capturing the data every point so effectively two stages so you have your samplings I've just detailed and you also have your quantization this is basically the resolution again and depends on the instrumentation and bits of res and also the resolution of the microcontroller so it depends on whether you're using a digital or an analog um, pin or the resolution actually to be honest of the of the piece of the instrumentation that we've got on here in this case it would be the instrumentation it'd be the resolution sorry of the ultrasonic sensor I guess and not this because this is this is the one that's doing the doing the analog to digital conversion for us but you can see already things do get quite confused and it's initially this video is just to give you an introduction it's to, it's not going to clear the water completely it's going to be murky but as you move through obviously then the, the kind of the next how many lectures things will start to make sense in terms of details that i'm talking about here so if we go one step further with the well and just focus on the quantization so what we have here is effectively f of t which is just some sort of measured um measured output here t of s and what you see here is I've got F of T, sorry, F of T, sorry, which is my continuous signal, which is the blue line here, right? So I've got F of T. What I've got is F of K, which is effectively here my sampled um, value from the sampled value from the continuous signal. So you can see here I'm sampling every TS seconds. And you can see here in terms of the sampled value in the table. And I've just said two t just for simplicity. I've said I'm just talking here in terms of TS, TS, two TS, three, three TS, four TS, five TS, six TS, seven TS. Here, um, just for simplicity and just to try and make things a little bit um, simpler. Um, and what the quantization does, it replaces each number with an approximation from a finite set of discrete values levels. So the number of levels you have or the distance between the levels is basically it's based on the resolution. So as I told you, in terms of the resolution that you're using for your sensor or your transducer, um, it's going to and obviously the microcontroller it depends on a few things. It's going to depend on how many levels you have and i.e. the resolution. OK, so the resolution is quite important for measurement because as you can see on this example that I'm about to go through, where we're just going to use two bits. So what this effectively gives us is two is the number of levels we get. So previously you kept seeing I was put, I was doing two to whatever the whatever the bits was. In this case we've got two bits. The number of levels is going to be equal to two n, which is going to be two to two, which is four. So we've effectively got four levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create now four levels. 
So I'm going to do 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75 and 1. And the reason obviously why I picked those values is because if I, if I look at the initial sampled values here, these values are between 0 and 1. So it makes sense just to do the, in, the, the, the values that I've selected there. The step size is given by this, but I think probably the step size, you don't need to do a calculation because you can just work it out. Um, it's just 1 take away 0 divided by 4, which is 0 0.25, which this effectively being our resolution, as I told you before, because it's the distance between the different levels. Right, so in this case, you can see straight away, well, if you were using this for the temperature sensor or for the distance measuring sensor, you'd straight away see this would be absolutely useless using two bits because your levels would be so far spaced apart that you'd be getting huge error. Okay, so I'm just further trying to emphasize here the importance of resolution and i.e. the number of bits that you're using um, for your effectively your, your sampled um, signal from your sensor. Right then, so what con how quantization works is because I've spoke all about this now. So what we've got here is our quantized value f of q so you can see here here the green value well the green line here so what's happening is okay you've got your continuous signal the microcontroller is sampling to get your, your effectively your digital value here which would work, relate to um, a binary value we'll get on to in a minute and then what it's doing is quantization because okay it samples it gets a number but your the value here is dependent on the resolution of the instrumentation bit you're using or the microcontroller, i.e. the level, the different levels. So you don't have an infinite level or an infinite number of, um, of levels. Okay, you have set values. So what happens is this value, basically, think about it, grabs the closest level. So in this case, it's going to be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 or 1. So for a value of 0 0.69, the closest level is 0 0.75, and hence that's the value that you will take. Likewise, for 0 0.37, the closest level is 0 0.25, so that's the level it's going to capture. 0 0.62, 0 0.5, as you can see, so that's the level it's going to capture. Right? 0 0.82, 0 0.75, and you can see the relationship as it goes on and on and on. Quite an interesting one here. You can see 0 0.37, so what it's going to capture is 0 0.5. So you can see here, this one here, capturing that level. 0 0.49 is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So what you're kind of getting the idea of here is, well, in all three of these, it's capturing, it's saying it's the same value, but you can see here, in terms of the range here, and, well, between 0 and 1, there's actually a huge error there. So the point I'm trying to get it again across is if, for example, this was for your temperature sensor or for your distance measuring sensor on the lab scale car, you would end up with, well, you just wouldn't be able to undertake, obviously, any control there because the distance that you'd be measuring on your microcontroller would be so off. Okay, but now because microcontrollers are increasing in power, the, the amount of switching you can do and the performance of it is you can obviously we get kind of we typically use for our sampling and obviously for our quantization for um, for kind of for example analog or digital signals from sensors and transducers they tend to be like 10 bits so you end up with the levels that are very very close and i.e good resolution and i.e good performance on terms of the control so I said to you, there's going to be a digital value, and I've spoken about this as we've spoken through, and this is going to be some sort of binary number. So again, there's effectively um, digital number you can see here. So, oh, actually, I've made a slight mistake. Okay, I went for levels actually. Sorry, to correct myself. I went from 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and 0 0.75. I didn't actually put a level on one. Okay, so for 0, um, 1, 1. So in terms of the how the the microcontroller is going to see this, it's going to see it in terms of numbers. So binary, so if it's 2 to the power of 2, you've got four different combinations. Because it's 2-bit, that means you've effectively got two numbers here. And these each of these has a possibility of being a 0 or 1. And that means that, again, you have four different combinations, and i.e. that equals to the number of levels. 
So here you can see 0 0.00011 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 1. And then you can see the corresponding digital signal for each one of the, obviously the cap, um, captured quantized value. And then finally here you've got a quantized error. And as I said previously, you can see here like the significance, i.e. of resolution, because sometimes you can be way off, but it's still going to capture the same level. So just to finish off, so we've detailed, give you an introduction, give you some motivational examples, then gone over Arduino Uno and some key important properties, i.e. the pulse modulation and the quantization. So as part of this, I've gone through the block diagram for a closed loop control system for a digital control system. So this has been given. So this is similar to the continuous time form and similar to the, well, it's more similar to, and it's relatable to the, to the sample data control system form that you've seen when you've covered discrete time modeling or in the previous lecture. I've given you details of the Arduino Uno microcontroller. So in terms of the operation voltage, input output pins, etc. Important properties. So the quantization. So effectively how important that is in terms of the resolution of the microcontroller and how that operates on the board. And pulse modulation again is quite important in terms of if you for your actuator for precision. Um, and I've detailed that. So thank you for um, listening to the lecture. If you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you.